Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Edgar and today we're going to talk about taming the recoil of a pistol grip shotgun. So I'm talking about this type of pistol grip shotgun. Some manufacturers call it the Persuader. Um, but there are other type of pistol grip shotguns that also have a stock attached here. And you'll see those for tactical shotguns where they use the pistol grip. It's a different kind of a hold, but they still have those three points of contact with the shoulder and the forend and the pistol grip. Also, you'll see it on turkey guns uh, because the way that they're sitting, it's a lot easier to hold a pistol grip. And it does help on the recoil because you have a better purchase on this pistol grip than you would have on a normally straight stock uh, or a pistol grip shotgun grip that's more straight here and you have an angled grip on it. So we'll be talking about the, particularly this one here and the reason why that these are popular for a lot of uses that the normal population doesn't use I, I would say is that it's really good in close quarters. So if you're in a vehicle, tank crews, SWAT teams, um, any place where it's hard to maneuver a, a, a normal sized shotgun which is going to be what 36 inches or more this one is coming uh, just under 28 inches right around 28 or so and that's above the legal limit of 26 inches overall for a shotgun if you get below 26 inches then you'll have to get a nfa stamp uh, national firearms act for that the same kind of stamp a 200 hundred dollar tax stamp and background check that they would use for full auto guns suppressors so-called sawed-off shotguns, that sort of thing. But this is above 26 inches, so there's no problem there. But as you can see, it's very short and easy to put into a long type um, gym bag or something like that. Um, you could sling it on your shoulder and make it very portable. Very popular with um, Alaska game wardens and other places where there are possibly predatory or nuisance bears around because the game warden it's one of the most dangerous jobs around because they're uh, alone in the woods. If they come across a, um, a grow of some kind or uh, people doing criminal activities in the woods, there's no one to call for help, so they're on their own. And in Canada, you know, they can't always carry pistols. I believe the game wardens can, but normal people can't um, carry uh, pistols. Uh, which is crazy. You get loggers up there and there's grizzly bears and stuff and they can't carry pistols. So you can carry this, which is, again, very portable. And they're using slugs against bears. So you'll see the game wardens will have slugs, maybe a Brennicky or something. At that point, you are going to get a lot more recoil. We're going to talk about loads that I use for this shotgun to help also reduce the recoil and make it much more manageable. But when you're up against a bear, you, the recoil isn't gonna to be too much of a problem. You need to uh, stop that bear. So a good slug is gonna be uh, what you want in the shotgun at that point. So this is also good for home defense, obviously, because if you're clearing a house or need to move around in the house, this is gonna be much more manageable. You could even hold it in one hand while you open a door or something, where a, a long shotgun, no matter how well trained you are, it's a problem clearing corners and stuff with a full length uh, rifle or shotgun. That's why for home defense, I like short weapons, uh, mainly pistols, uh, because I can have a light on that pistol and I can open doors and do things with my other hand and just have one hand and operate the light and the gun itself and it'll be harder to take away. That's the other thing. Weapon retention is very difficult with a long gun because of the leverage involved. Um, if someone gets a hold of the front of the gun as you're coming a corner or something, it's going to be, there's techniques to mitigate that and get out of that situation, but why not, you know, why put yourself in that anyway? So I like short weapons uh, for close quarters, including home defense. All right, so let's talk about actually taming the recoil on this gun. The first thing is the weight. The more weight you have, the less recoil you have, and that's almost across the board in any time of gu any type of gun that you have, whether it's um, uh, a rifle, a shotgun, or any other type of uh, gun, you're going to have uh, more weight, the less recoil. So this comes in right around six pounds as it is with a sling on it without the ammo. It's going to put it over a little over six pounds. Full length shotgun is going to be closer, probably seven and a half or eight. Um, this here is a Mossberg 500. It'll be the same for a Remington 870. You can get the accessories I'm going to show you uh, for 870 as well. Whether the Winchester 1300 has them available, I'm not sure. Um, but you want to have a shotgun platform that's going to be able to have the accessories that I recommend. On this gun right here, the Mossberg is a little bit lighter than the Remington 870. So you got that weight issue on this one. 
uh, but you don't have to go too crazy. Just adding the sling adds a few ounces, and, you know, I don't know how many, maybe six ounces or something with the metal on the ends and the swivels. Every little bit helps. And when you load this up with rounds, that's also going to help. And it's all going to help to reduce the recoil. But the really, the real star of the show, though, is this um, Hogue Tamer grip right here. So normally, like a Mossberg 500, for instance, I'm not sure the chemistry of the grip that Remington uses. But here's one that was, um, I'm guessing it was Duracoated. I bought the shotgun like this with these two together matching. And I just got really lucky and I found this limited edition uh, Hogue Tamer grip that's in digital camo, which actually matches the front pretty well. And I think it looks pretty good. But this was the original one. And I shot regular buckshot out of it. And I'm telling you, man, it hurt. It hurts because this isn't like a polymer you get on a Glock. Um, it's, you know, it's hard as a rock, man. That's, I'm guessing it's fiberglass reinforced nylon or something like that. That's what's hitting your hand when you recoil it. And the brunt of the recoil comes on your hand. And so I had to get rid of that and I was lucky to find the Tamer grip. So what the Tamer grip is, the part that, that touches your hand is actually all rubber. And it's got some really nice pebbled texturing here. It has a sling swivel that's already integrated into it, very strong. It has finger grooves here to help to hold on to the pistol grip. It makes it very ergonomic. But the really cool thing here is right here in the back is a, a gel. This is gel right here right at the point where you're holding it and the re recall comes back just like on a pistol this area right here so it is a little bit wide all rubber and then the gel here and i'm telling you that makes a big difference on recoil that's amazing these go for about 30 35 dollars in 2019 and i don't know if, what colors they come in but uh, get this and this is really going to be helping a lot and make this very suitable i don't find it uncomfortable at all with that so as I, as I recommended, you add the sling to it, and also it's gonna make it really easy to carry. This is an awesome thing to carry, and, and this one here has a rubber insert here so it doesn't slip off your shoulder. Um, the other uh, most important thing, uh, well, before I go any further, I just wanna mention that's an 18 inch barrel, 28 inches overall. I mentioned uh, six pounds. Remington will be a little bit longer, but that's the 18 inch barrel, and that's what you want. You don't wanna to go to 20, just to add extra rounds, I'm all for the portability. And when you're carrying on your shoulder in your woods all day or in a vehicle and you're doing, um, you know, tactical exercises, whatever, um, you're going to, you're going to want this short as possible. Um, <clears throat> all right. So the other really important thing is choose your ammo. If you put a three inch slug in here, or a three inch buckshot, um, it's going to be more recoil than 30 odd six. Uh, 4570 probably it's gonna hurt it's gonna be a lot of recall on a normal shotgun let alone uh, this one here so i don't re recommend any of those and i don't re recommend people putting a three inch slug in this and handing it to someone and say here shoot this uh, just for just for fun that is terrible because it it, it it hurts so bad except especially with that hard grip that it's going to put people off to shotguns and and shooting so i see people do that you don't want to do that so what you do want is two, the regular standard two and three quarter inch um, shotgun shells. And they have reduced recoil now because they know the effect of this kind of recoil. So they have re reduced recoil slugs and especially buckshot for tactical nuts police. And that's because managed recoil will allow you to put more rounds on target, faster follow-up shots, all those same things that you would find in a, in a pistol. Um, for combat shooting or self-defense shooting. So the managed recoil, they have um, reduced pellet. So one manufacturer makes uh, eight pellets instead of nine of double O buckshot. And another one will just have the nine pellets, but they'll reduce the load. And it makes this gun a sweetheart to shoot. It, that really helps. So that's my recommendation on taming recoil with these guns is to get some sort of uh, recoil absorbing pistol grip uh, put a sling on it for you know so you can carry it and so it'll reduce a little bit of recoil and get those reduced recoil buckshot um, also birdshot that's not um, that's not hunting type will also work but I'm not a fan of um, small shot 
uh, shotgun for self-defense. You know, I like um, number four shot is really good. The Federal Load, you get about 27 pellets, and, and it's, I think, 30 caliber, 28 caliber, something like that. I haven't looked at it in a while. That's what I used for a really long time for my home defense shotgun. But I switched over to the, to the double O uh, buckshot reduced recoil uh, or reduced pellet ones, and it is a pleasure to shoot. Um, so I'm gonna wrap this up. The, the other thing you wanna do is um, how you fire the shotgun. The ones you see in the movies where they're uh, holding it at their hip and shooting, that's not a good way to shoot any kind of gun. You'll see it with um, uh, other kind of guns that they use, they're shooting it from the hip. The shotgun, uh, it's not a good way to do it. It's very difficult to aim like that unless you do it every day instinctively, and it's not the best way to do that at all. Why? Because any kind of shooting, um, if you're hunting, you sight along the barrel. You're not really aiming, but you're sighting along the barrel uh, all the time. And those who do that sort of thing are get much better hits than just instinctively. So aiming is always a good thing, even if it's um, uh, over the top of the barrel, like you often do with ARs if you're in a close quarters. You, you don't want to take your eyes off the target. Combat shooting or self-defense shooting is always both eyes open. You want to keep your eye on the target. And the ideal situation to keep your eyes on the target and sight along the gun. That's why the gun is often brought up into the line of sight when you shoot. But that doesn't mean you have to look through the post. I mean, look through the notch in the post on your handgun or along the, the tip of your barrel on a shotgun. What it means is if you're really close quarters, you're looking over the slide and the entire slide becomes an uh, aiming line. And this shotgun will work the same way. So one of the most ideal ways to shoot this gun is, um, in another video, I hope I can show you all that um, standing up and so forth. But basically what you wanna do is when you're holding the shotgun like this and holding this tightly against your body is also gonna reduce recoil. So you have this point you have your wrist here absorbing recoil, but also the way I recommend it, and I saw this on a SWAT team somewhere. I only saw it once. Uh, but what you do is you take this back end here and you put this part of your wrist, your right wrist if you're right-handed, you put this part against, um, against your sternum a little bit to the right. So you wanna put it on your right chest area, right in here, tuck it right in here onto your chest, if you can imagine that, and that's gonna use your body to absorb the recoil, make that third point. So your the, your chest and your pistol grip and this forend is gonna become a very powerful, um, a lot of mass is gonna be behind that shooting. And I'm telling you, it's a very soft shooting. So what you do is, um, it's gonna look something like this. So all you do is just aim the whole barrel along this line, right at the target, and, and and turn it slightly like this and put it right against your chest and, and it's going to look something like something like that you know you're not going to have it right up to your eye like this since it's on your chest it's going to look a lot like that and if your target's down there as you can imagine that's how it would work and then you could rack the slide and do everything right there on your chest and that's a really good way to do it that's how i recommend shooting it uh, of course, if your house clearing is going to be in different position, that's fine too. Emergencies, you do what you can do to get rounds on target. And all that should be practiced at a safe uh, target range. All right, so I'm going to leave it here. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like doing that. I mean, if you like um, the video. And we're going to do uh, many more uh, coming soon. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Have a great day.